Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. We're glad you're here this Friday morning. We've got a big show on up, a special guest here in the studio. But first, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Highway 77, high of 83 and low 63. Got a good 20 degree swing. Actually, the water temperature, ironically, has gone up one degree. Jumped from 75 to 76 today, but this weekend really looking nice. Let's take a look at our river readings brought to us by Watson's Landing Marina and Dry Storage. Our river readings, we're looking at the Apalachicola at a 2.5 and it is steady. It's gonna be a good day on the river tomorrow and also the Choctahatchee at Caraville is 2.3. Watson's Landing Marina and Dry Storage about two minutes east of the downtown Harrison Avenue, right there on Business 98. Watson Bayou is one of the historically uh, significant places for boat storage. Back in the old days, the old, the old sailors and all would put their ships up in there to protect them from the hurricane. So we're glad to have them on as a new sponsor. Our, our uh, tide chart brought to us by Kent First Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. We're looking at not a lot of good tides, but we're looking at a high tide at 7.09 a.m. and low tide at 3.28 p.m. And it's not a, not a lot of, a, it's more, almost a neap tide. Today's October 23rd and tomorrow's gonna be even worse tides. But anyway, keep in mind the wind's gonna be coming out north-northeast at about five to 10. It's been blowing north-northeast now for quite some time. And I hope to be on Cape Sandblast uh, this time tomorrow getting ready to uh, do some surf fishing. So we'll give you a first-hand report from down there. And it's going to be a, a good weekend of fish, but just not going to have a lot of tidal flow. But, but we're going to be in, we're in good shape. All right, that takes care of our weather. Uh, let's go ahead and do our, on this segment, let's go ahead and do our uh, fishing game time because we're going to do our fishing report. Let's go ahead and set it up here. Brought to us by Mark Coward of Counts Real Estate. And we're looking at our time uh, at this morning, 9.01 to 11.01 is our two hour block there. And then tonight from 9.28 to 11.28, and it's gonna be pretty out on the water tonight. If you can get out there on a, on a Friday night, I know a lot of people get busy, but I, I know we have a good segment of folks that go out on the water on Friday nights. And it's, so be careful and enjoy, it's gonna be beautiful. All right, we're gonna take our break and be right back with our special guest. Oh yeah, welcome back and good morning, Brad. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing? I'm doing great, buddy. Brad Stevens, Sun Jammer is one of our sponsors since day one. Been with us a long time. Man, and uh, I feel yeah. old. <laughs> well, listen, you've always got some cool stuff, and I, I, we always uh, go down there. We're getting ready for Christmas, man. We are, and I know y'all are like, oh, Christmas? Are you kidding me? It's still October, man. Look at the calendar. I don't know. When we come back from break, I'll tell you how many Fridays is left. But I it's think less it's, than ten. Yeah, it's I like, think it's uh, eight, maybe. Yeah, eight I mean, it's like. My mind is blown, you know, and you're gonna have two or three of them Friday nights that you're gonna have Christmas parties. Mm -hmm. So you got like, you need to do all your Christmas shopping this weekend. <laughs> I'm like, tonight? That's Why? right. I mean, That's tonight. Right. Mainly because two things. If you want a Yeti product, which everybody wants for Christmas this year, we're already sold out of cups just about everywhere. Call us before you come in, I'm just being honest with you, because we ain't got them. We got a few Colsters left. They have their low ball that's your little bitty new cup. I should get 150 of those per store the first part of next week. And that's probably gonna be it until like January or February. Are you serious? Yes, it's just, yeah, they're right. out. You know, I don't wanna create a, a Yeti craze, but um, if you wait, you ain't gonna have it. It's, yeah. like, it's like trying to decide if you're gonna make that nice long cast on that school of redfish and a jet ski's coming. If you wait too long, them fish are gone. Mm -hmm. So. You know, you got to make that cast as soon as you can. That's good outdoor and you got to start, um, you got to start um, getting your Christmas shopping done early too. Oh, that's, um, a good, that's a good present. But this right here, this is the Yeti Colster. Um, we assume most people have seen them, but yet we, every day we introduce somebody else to this project. So this holds your favorite 12 ounce beverage. It'll also hold all domestic beer bottles. And all you do is you simply put your can or bottle in here. You put the, um, the thermal ring on top of it, give a little twist, and it is the world's most sophisticated koozie. And I hear it all day long. My beer never lasts long enough to need something that fancy. You're yeah. right, it doesn't. But you know how that first sip of any drink when you pull it out of that ice on that hot day, it almost hurts, it's so cold. Mm. And then you keep going, you keep going, and you lose some of that, um, that, that refreshness. This will make your last sip taste just like your first sip. And I don't care if you set it down 
clean a mess of mullet and then came back and picked it up, it's just as cold. It'll mm -hmm. maintain its coldness for, I don't know, about an hour and a half, two hours. And it's, it's science. I, I cannot, I'm not smart enough to tell you how it works. Uh, it's amazing. It was developed over around Austin, Texas, which is the hub of technology. And uh, they, they, they hit a secret on something. They just hit right, right it's, button. And I, we just did our order for next year, and they got more new products coming out. And I'm like, seriously? Yeah. I'm like, how, how they think, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just blessed to be part of their company. So we're getting a lot of people complain about the black flies, and are they calling them black flies. I don't know if they're black flies and mosquitoes and stuff, carting them off. Um, I know everybody knows that we sell cactus juice, but cactus juice is the greatest bug spray ever. Um, I spray this on my dogs. My dogs have flies. I went out the other day and they, the tops of their ears were just coated in um, flies. And we, so we went to the vet, we bought that overpriced stuff, smeared it on their ears, you know, as we love our dogs. They lick it off each other, so it's really pointless. So I spray cactus juice all over my dogs, and next thing you know, I got the only dog in the neighborhood that's outside laying in the dirt without flies on it. Yeah. It's, I, I, and once again, I'm not smart enough to tell you what's in this. And it, nowhere on this does it say bug repellent, bug insect. Your government owns the rights to those words. And as you have to buy them back or put 15% DEET in your product. Yeah. This is DEET free. And I used to be a DEET brat. If it didn't tingle when it went on, I knew it wasn't going to work. Yeah. And, you know, folks, this is something on, on insect repellent and all. This is something you really need to keep in your truck, in your car, with, with you at all times, in your camper. We, went out, we were camping at Lake Upala last weekend, and, and somehow just, you know, setting up camp. Some mosquitoes got in my camper, and I documented, and Gail was laughing at me because, boom, I documented five different mosquitoes that got in the camper while I'm setting up, setting up camp. And I'm looking around for my, for my juice and all, I couldn't find it. Yeah, it's... But, uh, uh, next, I, next time we go, it's going to be in the truck. Um, absolutely. Um, and it's just not on the water. Um, my daughters yeah. are cheering for beach barracudas. Go Kudas! And um, at, at practice, I about go through a bottle of those people coming up going, can I borrow some cactus juice? I mean, I'm getting eaten alive. <laughs> so the entrepreneur myself, I started keeping a case of this in my truck mm -hmm. and a credit card swipe. So if you're a CUDA parent and you need some cactus <laughs> juice, come find me and my wife as we got it for you. Oh, but cool. um, but this is um, made in America. Um, it's a company out of Texas. Um, once again, it's um, they say they're in Austin, but they're just outside of Austin, Texas. But good, small company. I can call the people that developed it, that did the logos, I mean, the whole nine yards. Super small company, we're in about our third year selling this product, mm -hmm. and it's still trucking along. Like we tell everybody, if this doesn't work on you, let us know. Um, don't feel bad, I'm, I'm not gonna give you your money back, but I need to know because rumor has it, bugs will adapt to areas over time. So if yeah. this starts becoming ineffective, we'll switch it up a little bit. Right now, this is the best stuff we can find for killing them skeeters. Okay, all right, that sounds good. Let's take a quick break, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So here with Brad Stevens, some sun jammers. We always enjoy having them coming on. There's always some cool stuff and, and nothing new on the rinse kit. Before we get the rinse kit, I know it's doing well, but let's talk about fishing real quick. What's going on in the 79 shop? Man, 79 store, they are pumping some fishing tackle out, mainly because yours truly ordered a little too much of the good stuff. And um, <laughs> then I went to the trade show and I get all caught up in the excitement of the show and ordered a little too much more of the good stuff. So first time we've ever done a massive sale at the tackle store. If you're friends with us on Facebook or Instagram, um, you've known about this for about a week or so. Um, we're doing buy one, get one free, you know, half offs mm -hmm. on some, you know, and it's just yeah. massive tackle sales. And it is literally, it's so the store starting to look a little bare when you walk in there, but don't worry. I got gobs of stuff on the way. Um, but we got to make room for it. So go out there. I mean, I think we have gulp, buy one, get one free bags. Um, you know, and it's, and it, we didn't order stuff to put on sale like some of the stores do. This was the stuff we normally had. I, I ordered 500 of them instead of 300 of them, so I had 200 of them too many, and the packaging starting to look tarnished or dirty or, you know, I don't know. And some of the stuff I just said, man, let's just get people hooked on this product, so let's put it on sale. It's cheap enough, we realized y'all will buy anything, only we put the cheap price on the good stuff at Highway 79 to keep you rolling. That's a good idea. And, right, yeah, um, a lot of good stuff. and it's good. So all those fish that you're going to be out there catching on all of our BOGOs, our buy one, get one free lures you're going to come out and get, you're going to need to rinse off your hands or something. If your boat doesn't have a pressurized water system on it, this rinse kit right here will take care of you. This will hold two gallons of pressurized water, comes with a spigot, and it is so easy to charge. I wish I could actually show you the whole process on the show. 
but you're going to have to come by either our St. Andrews location or our Highway 79 location, and we'll show you. It takes about 30 seconds to fill this up with water. All you need is a pressurized water, a hose bib mm -hmm. or something like that, and um, you'll convert that pressure inside of here. It's kind of like the Yeti products. I ain't smart enough to know how it works. All I know is it works. Yeah. And um, I, I ran into this at ICAST. I think you fell in love with it at ICAST. I really did. It's, just, it's such a great idea. It doesn't take but one trip out to the beach with a bunch of kids and all trying to get back in the car and truck to, to rinse them off and see where it pays for itself. And it's just a, a fascinating, or down on the river and all, where you, don't, you know, if you put it on your boat and you rinse stuff off, and, you know, and it just all, all kind of neat ideas with this. It's just, um, you know, then my mom uses it to rinse her car off in the morning because mm -hmm. she didn't want to drag the water hose over there. That's my good. mom's from that. Y'all know, those of y'all that know my mom, her car's got to be clean. She'll just rinse it off. If she keeps it in the garage, she still rinses it off. <laughs> but, um, and y'all see me in my pickup truck, you go, man, there's so much dirt on that, it's holding it together. Well, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought about that, rinsing your car off in the morning. Or she's got a little garden that's over that she doesn't want to, like a couple flowers. Mm -hmm. So, all yep. right. As you know, in Historic St. Andrews, we have started um, selling apparel. We didn't want to go out and get all the stuff like everybody else did. We wanted you to be able to come in and find something different, made in America if possible, and cool. So, this is a company called Flood Tide that we started selling. This is... Um, 100% USA made cotton shirt. Mm -hmm. It is super, super, super soft. I mean, I wish you could reach through the TV and feel how soft this is, but just super soft shirt. So I'm gonna run through a bunch of their designs here. It almost feels like flannel. I mean, it's really so soft. I mean, it's soft. just, it's, it's, and this is a really thin shirt. And with this Prima cotton, you're able to wear it in the, these cool mornings, you're able to wear this. And then as it warms up, it, it's breathable. So mm -hmm. it just doesn't, it's, I know it sounds weird. Keeps you cool and keeps you warm, but it just does, it's science. Mm -hmm. This is one of our favorite ones of um, there. It's called the Tour. Um, they have an, an artist called um, Paul Puckett. Um, he's one of the partners in Flood Tide. They got a guy that sources the fabric and then an artist to hit this. So all these are artist design. They didn't farm this out. Mm -hmm. These are South Carolina or North Carolina boys. And the um, shirt I'm wearing right now is called The Grateful Red. I think <laughs> some of y'all will remember that um, album cover right there. Ooh. And um, you know, it's got a red fish tail in the middle of it. And just everything they have is just a huge spin and a it. huge play on, um, on fun stuff. You know, this is the Don't Tread On Me crab um, that everybody's used to seeing. Um, <laughs> once again, these are all flood tide shirts. And we got about eight of their designs. These are just four of them that I brought for you. Oop, here, I brought a fifth one. This one right here is called Cruising Red. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like, once again, I wish you don't just come in the store on, in St. Andrews. We don't have these on 79 yet and just feel how soft they are. Let me tell you this. Teenagers, young people love these kind of shirts. I see them wear them all the time. Feel that one. 100% bamboo. Really? Super soft. Um, you know, it's bamboo's the new craze. So that's our mm -hmm. in-house design. Let me blow through this next one we have real quick. It's called Skinny Water Culture. Um, once again, these are all artist designs out of Jacksonville. That's a speckled trout coming up to eat a fly. Ooh, nice. That's a redfish um, about to scoop a fly up off the ground. I know that one's hard to see. And then America. Um, you know, that's just there. That's the Skinny Water Culture logo mm -hmm. um, there and a t shirt. And we're almost done with shirts. I got a good selection. North, South, East, and Best. We all know where Best is, and that's right down here in the good old South where we are. For you dog bird hunters with a dog, mm -hmm. this shirt in person just looks absolutely unbelievable. And ladies, we haven't forgot about y'all. We have a huge selection of female apparel. And this is a local company. Um, I think they're Mosley graduates. Um, they, um, this is a company called 30A Threads. This is one of their five or six designs that we have. Mm -hmm. This is Stewie, and these are little turtles inside of it. And this is, once again, 100% USA-made shirt. Local girl designed it. It's mm -hmm. a local company. and. Um, Super wow. soft. I mean, oh, it's just, what a great selection. Like I told Coach, I know we're out of time. I never thought I'd prepare okay. for Panhandle Outdoors with a wardrobe. But um, this clothing is so cool, and we're really proud of all the companies. They're all outdoors people. Monica that does this shirt, she hunts, she fishes, she remodels houses, she builds her own trade show displays. She's the real deal. Well, and that's the thing about it. I was telling Brad, outdoors has been a, a sort of set the fashion trend over the past years and all because, you know, it's outdoor activities and people want to sort of uh, mimic that and model that. Look at Columbia. Columbia is yeah. all, all your preppy kids wear Columbia now. Mm -hmm. So the joke is if you're wearing Columbia, you're not a real fisherman. You're a <laughs> wannabe fisherman. <laughs> These companies like Flood Tide, Howler Brothers, they're the next craze of it. So, you know, if you want to be, 
if you want to be legit on the water, you got to be ahead of the curve. And what a great selection. And I don't know about y'all, but when we start buying Christmas, we just don't buy one thing. We buy like a group of things and something like that, put in a little, you know, buy a little water. Absolutely. This, and that's, that's a great idea. All right, Brad, let's get ready for our drawing. And we've got, we've about got a jar full of, uh, of names in here. So if you fall out, we're not going to count them. I'm going to let you draw. Okay, it'll be a twenty dollar gift certificate to Tarpon Dock Seafood, and the second one's gonna be a red snapper. All right, you ready? I'm ready. This first one right here is Merrill Kirkland. Merrill Kirkland. I think they've won twenty dollars okay, before. Okay, so that's the second time. What's the chance of that? About one in a thousand. I'm getting commission. Yeah. Okay, and the big red snapper. Now I want the throats off this one for my commission. <laughs> and drop it off in St. Andrews. All right. Nancy, is that Bar? I can't Bar read you right. Barker? Nancy Barker. The Funiac Springs. Our viewers up there in North Walton County. Got a good viewership in all of Walton, North Walton and South Walton. We appreciate that. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to get set up for our famous Friday fishing forecast, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. The famous Friday fishing forecast brought to us by Tropic Dog Seafood. The Panhandle is covered here on Panhandle Outdoors as far as what's going on every weekend. So tune in. If you can't pick it up on the show, go to our website and get it there. First thing Brad and I want to talk about, fresh water. Now, do y'all have crickets? We got crickets. Okay. The river is right. And you've seen the picture sent in this week. You saw yesterday that big 19-pound uh, catfish, or 17.9-pound catfish caught by Tommy Oliver, he and his wife. And they got a mess of brim on the river. So it's going to be great fishing on the river. When I say the river, now I'm talking about the Apalachicola River and all those creeks. I'm talking about the Choctahatchee River and all those creeks. That's just we're we're so blessed to be surrounded by that, that river system here. So uh, go by and get your crickets and all. Uh, if if you get a chance, so let's take a quick look on the east end down around the East Point of Carabell area. They've been hit hard with red tide. I, I'll be honest with you, the reports I've gotten. I think we're on a tail end of it, but you still, if I was going to fish in this area this weekend, I would fish on the backside of St. George Island around the State Park right in here. You're going to have a, a good wind. If I'm going to flounder, I'm going to stay around East Point. Uh, they'll get some flounder here. And also, uh, I'd go up here on outgoing tide to Indian Pass and fish this outgoing tide. Now, I'm saying I would do if I was over here now. But what I'm planning on doing, I'm going to fish tomorrow morning. This time tomorrow morning, all goes well, the Lord's willing, I'm going to be surf fishing right here in this area right in here and I'll be giving a report and uh, my reports there, there's some of a little bit of red tide Mexico Beach I think is one of the hardest hit areas of red tide especially the canal uh, it's been in uh, the canal has been in, in uh, hit pretty bad too so uh, but it's not you got to keep in mind on this red tide folks on the red tide it's not all, completely over 100% of the area mm -hmm. there's a little bit of scattered fish kills here and a little bit over here and the birds the birds, from my view, what my viewers say, are all over the place taking care of these dead fish. It's a natural uh, recycling. Absolutely. Uh, let's come on in to here to uh, locally uh, on St. Andrew Bay. What are you hearing down at the store? Heard very little reports of red tide locally. I mean, you get a little patch here, a little patch here, but that was a week or so ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and surf fishing on the west end of the beach um, through the roof, they're starting to catch those. Bigger fall reds, starting mm -hmm. to catch some pompano. I haven't seen many flounder caught in the surf yet, mm -hmm. but those flounder are stacking up at the mouth of the pass. You know, you want to throw an egret bait or something um, there and literally just bounce it on the bottom, and um, you know they're they're stacking up. Um, you know, right in here at the mouth of the pass, you know, getting ready to go out into the Gulf mm -hmm. to spawn. So um, I haven't heard much reports of people floundering um, with much success, but they are catching them hook and line. Um, you know, in the deeper parts of the water. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed there in back of our house in St. Andrews, a lot of the bait that's normally right up on the shore this time of year is mm -hmm. not there. So I'm wondering if the red tide got some of that bait um, earlier this month, and that's got the flounder. Because if the bait ain't there, the flounder aren't going to be there. Yeah. So that could be why we don't have the flounder people. Yeah, and usually that's the first species that affects. Red tide will hit those bait fish first and uh, because of the small size of them. All. So that, that might be a reason right there. I, I have been getting some reports in. got some pictures in uh, this morning right before the show. So I'm going to show them on Monday morning show some nice flounder. Some folks went gigging over in, in the bay system. Oh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the canals, on the intercoastal waterway now, have you heard any reports on 79 store from on the intercoastal waterway? I have not. Okay. Um, I don't I, think it's quite cool either. enough for a lot of people to yeah. be pumping in there, but the redfish bite in West Bay is doing really, really well. It, it really is, and always, you know, we're talking about between the creeks, and I, I, I talk about between the rivers is good, but between the creeks here, uh, a crooked, a crooked Creek is, is always producing this time of year in, in the fall. 
Okay, and Burnt Mill Creek is always a good spot, and and you, it's great for kayaking. Uh, kayakers, absolutely. I know your folks go there a lot. Yeah, our kayakers. Um, you know they we 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 unofficially say we own Burnt Mill Creek. We don't. We play with everybody, yeah. but um, you know there's always a lot of kayakers on Burnt Mill Creek. Um, just because it's such an easy launch, it's um. It's really good. It's really fun. And it's that one part of it is absolutely it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, we're scooting along there, you know, two, three miles an hour on the creeks. And it's just it's just absolutely gorgeous, especially the North Creek. Um, this winter just gets really, yeah. really pretty. And this time of year, kayak fishing really starts to excel, mm -hmm. um, especially in the winter, because we get these north winds with a low tide. Those boats can't get up on there. I mean, you mm -hmm. can, but you're burning the grass flat. You know, you're really shooting yourself in the foot by blasting across some of those grass flats, turning it up. Um, you know, where the kayakers you just sneak in there and, you know, just lay it to them. Yeah, and not, not just the creeks, but again, we're talking about the month of October. What a great situation. We're sort of at the end of October, got about a week left, and we sort of, the, you, you mentioned redfish and the surf. I've seen some really nice pictures of surf yes. fishing for redfish. So October is a great time for red fishing in the surf. And the Pompano Run on, on the west end is still going on, but it's, it's going to start tapering off pretty soon on the west end and work its way to the east end. So it, things are looking really good for surf fishing. Like I say, that's some of my favorite, favorite kind of fishing because it doesn't take a lot of a, a lot of effort to get out there, and, and everybody can do it. So. And they're still catching a few big king mackerel. Yeah. Um, uh, here it's, you know, I said on our fishing report, if you go to our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. it's just about, uh, you know, this is probably our last run. You know, we're yeah. we're a cold front away from them kings being gone until springtime. Yeah, yeah. Mexico Beach, uh, Mitch Coburn sends in a report. They're still catching kings there around the car bodies and all. So it's still good there. So you got a, you got a big choice this weekend, a tough choice. Man, you do. You have a real tough choice. And I know some of you boys are heading to the woods too, but man, fishing's heating up. So. Well, the big and, thing now, what about talking about is bear hunting. So uh, y'all yep. give us some reports on the bear hunts and send us some pictures of the, of the bears and all. But uh, uh, we're going to be fishing this weekend, and uh, hopefully uh, all of y'all will just get outdoors and do something in the outdoors. It's going to be good. Brad, thanks for uh, coming on, buddy. Man, Coach, blessed, blessed to be here. And uh, run by and check them out. They're a great, great sponsor. They've got all kind of Christmas stuff, okay? Remember, we're closed on Sundays. We get notes every Monday morning. We tried to come see you. We're closed on Sundays, mm -hmm. and we're not going to apologize for it. All right. Y'all have a great day. Have a great outdoor weekend. Do something good for your fellow man, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.